Okay, maybe we should start. Mm -hmm. okay, to start on time. So, Thomas, you. Yes. So. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, welcome everybody to uh, this episode of, of the DMFT Quantum Embedding Online Symposium. It's a great pleasure to introduce you two speakers on actually a very similar or even the same topic, namely twisted bilayer graphene, and uh, we are all very much looking forward to a talk. So just uh, for organizational purposes, if you have a question, you can raise the hand with the raise hand option, or you can also type the question into the chat, which uh, Olivier and I will be constantly monitoring. And I also have to say best greetings from Antoine. He unfortunately cannot join today because he's giving a talk himself at this very time. So the first uh, talk is uh, given by Maria Jose Calderon from the Instituto de Ciencia de Materiales de Madrid. And uh, the title of her talk is The Unconventional uh, Normal State of Twisted Bilayer Graphene. Maria, we're looking forward to your talk. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you so much. First of all, thank you for organizing this uh, seminar series, which is very interesting. And also for inviting me to give a talk here. It's a pleasure and an honor to uh, address this, uh, this uh, community and uh, tell you about our work that uh, we have been doing for a while already. So uh, we have been uh, looking at the unconventional normal state of twisted binary graphene, and we will see what we mean by that. And the first thing is to present my collaborators, Anushri Data. She's now in France, but she was a postdoc in, in our group uh, until one year ago. Uh, Alberto Camhagi from the University of Buenos Aires in Argentina. And then, uh, well, Lenny Vascones, who is a long term collaborator in many other topics as well. So let me start just by uh, presenting Twisted Bayer Graphene that you all know. Uh, so this uh, material and other related van der Waals structures have become in the last few years a great playground to uh, study condensed matter uh, and uh, condensed matter physics. No, you can rotate uh, one of the graphene layers on top of the other, and then a superstructure is formed. This uh, moiré pattern with a very large uh, unit cell. Um, so uh, this very large unit cell has uh, thousands of atoms and, and that means that uh, we have a, a very a very small real zone okay so we have a lot of folding of our bands and uh, this added to the fact that we have a, a, a tunneling between the, the two layers this gives rise to this uh, this uh, kind of bands in which we have a flat bands that are separated from the from the remote bands and these flat bands are of the order of uh, a few uh, milli electron volts and um, and we have uh, uh, these two bands per valley and per spin so we have one valley that comes from the k points of uh, the graphene layers and the other that comes from the k prime points so we have this degeneracy, uh, well, it's not really degeneracy. I have, uh, we have uh, the black, um, the black lines, the black uh, curves are for one of the valleys and the red ones for the other valley. And we also have the spin degeneracy. So in total, we can have up to eight electrons here. So the charge neutrality point is at the uh, Dirac uh, touching that is protected by by symmetry. So we keep the the direct uh, the Dirac touching that we have in the uh, single layer of graphene. And, um, and and then we can dope from minus four to four. No? So we, we can dope with electrons and uh, holes uh, with respect to the charge neutrality point. Uh, so these uh, very flat ones that uh, we see here imply that the electron-electron interactions are relatively very important in, this, in these materials. And uh, in fact, many correlated states have been observed uh, in, this, in this system. Uh, this include the uh, well, the existence of uh, these uh, insulating states at integer fillings of these uh, flat bands. We have also superconductivity at intermediate fillings, and also some cascades. And this uh, spectral wave reorganization of um, at integer fillings has been observed. Uh, and then many uh, symmetry broken states like intervallic coherent states, uh, ferromagnetism, integer quantum hole effect, um, um, fractional uh, churn insulators, uh, charge density wave, etc. And this uh, happened at, at low temperatures, and we will see that uh, other features uh, survive up to higher temperatures. 
So the effect of correlations were uh, studied um, very soon, already in 2019. Um, the, there were some hints uh, of the importance of correlations with uh, STM measurements in which uh, you could see that uh, when you dope, there is not a rigid band shift of the bands, uh, but a, a reorganization. So here, uh, the, I mean, I show a, um, a plot from, from this paper in which uh, they measure the DIDV, which is proportional to the density of states uh, for fully occupied flat bands. And we see that two peaks here. And, the, uh, and if you are at intermediate uh, filling with partially occupied flat bands, we have a completely different uh, reorganization of uh, the spectral weight. Also, uh, it was observed that uh, this, uh, this uh, DIDB, as a function of the filling, this would be this is a gate that you can apply to change the filling of the flat bands. And you see that there is a suppression of this uh, density of states every time that you um, that you hit an integer filling of uh, of the bands. Uh, later in 2020, these beautiful experiments and other related ones showed that um, there are uh, there is a, a strong reorganization of the of the spectral weight that you can see here. So in here in horizontal is a, a bias voltage that allows you to explore the well. Uh, from zero, which is the chemical potential, uh, you, you can explore the, the spectrum, uh, the, the energies of, of the bands. And in perpendicular, uh, sorry, in, in, in vertical, we have the gate voltage that allows you to change the feeling of the bands, the doping. And we can see that there is a spectral weight reorganization with resets at integer feeling. So we have these periodic uh, resets. And there is like uh, this change in the spectral um, the spectral way that look like uh, cascades. Then we also see a different uh, behavior at the charge neutrality point. And uh, here uh, we can see also the oscillations of the remote bands. These two plots correspond to putting the STM uh, tip in different areas of the of the twisted bio graphene. So this would correspond the, the left one to areas in which uh, there is a stacking of uh, AA, um, uh, so an AA stacking of the of the graphene layers, and here it is where you have the AB stacking. Okay, so you you see some different features. And these uh, were measured at six Kelvin, but uh, you can see similar uh, that similar features that these features can survive up to tens of Kelvin. Another set of experiments that uh, showed that. Uh, there are these uh, spectral reorganizations uh, and, and the correlation with uh, the, uh, the integer feelings is in the uh, inverse compressibility that also show the, the same kind of information. So uh, you can see that there are asymmetric saw tooth peaks that reset at integer feelings and then a, a symmetric peak at the charge neutrality point. And as well, these uh, features survive up to uh, uh, tens of Kelvin. So these are temperatures at which uh, we don't expect to have a, a, all the symmetry broken states that are uh, more prevalent at lower temperatures. Finally, uh, just to uh, finish with the uh, experiments that they want to, to focus on later in my, in, uh, when I show the results. Uh, the resistivity at integer feelings that I mentioned before has also been observed at too high temperature. So these experiments went up to 40 Kelvin. And you can see that uh, there, the, there are these, uh, well, these uh, features that arise. Uh, so this uh, an increase of resistivity at integer feelings. In particular, I want to point out these ones that are uh, more clear. So you can see that the, uh, the resistivity is increasing, uh, is large. Uh, even at high temperatures, and uh, it doesn't seem to go away as uh, you would expect uh, if it went to a non-interacting picture. Okay, so uh, the focus of our work has been to find out the relation between uh, these observations and electronic correlations at uh, temperatures at which we don't expect to have symmetry broken states. Uh, so, uh, this is the question that we wanted to answer. And then uh, I want to stress that our focus is to study this normal state. So we still expect that there are a, a low temperature, there are broken symmetry states, but we are not focusing on that. This 
uh, I, I guess that it will be uh, the topic of uh, Gautam in, in the next talk, but we are focusing on, on this normal state, no? this normal state from which all these low symmetry states are going to arise, but uh, here we don't have uh, these uh, this broken symmetry states, just the effect of correlations between uh, uh, by itself, no? without provoking pro uh, broken symmetry states. Okay, so the approach that we want to do is uh, we, we uh, use a mixed approach with dynamical mean field theory uh, and, uh, and heart tree. I will uh, explain how. And uh, in order to do this, we, uh, we need a suitable tight banding model uh, for the uh, morelatis. So let's start by uh, presenting the model. Uh, it is well known that due to the uh, topology of uh, the flat bands, we don't, uh, we don't have a, a model for only the flat bands with the uh, Vanier states. So we need to include more bands. Uh, we need to include the remote bands. So there are uh, a few proposals that uh, have been made uh, for this. We have chosen this uh, particular one proposed by uh, car and collaborators in which uh, uh, we use an eight orbital model for the Moray lattice. Uh, this allows us to keep all the uh, important symmetries of the system, like the C2T, C3, and the mirror symmetry. Uh, so in the plot, you can see the black lines that are coming from a, a continuum model. Uh, we have chosen a, a rotation angle of uh, 1.08, that is uh, very close to the magic angle 1.11. And uh, the blue lines is the fitting that we can do with this uh, eight orbital model. So these are the uh, locations of the of the orbital models, a sketch of the uh, the orbitals that that we use. So we have a triangular lattice that is signaled by these uh, red and orange points, and here uh, these are the uh, correspond to the AA stacking, and uh, here we have three orbitals, two. Uh, with uh, p plus and p minus symmetry and one with s symmetry then in the hexagonal points we have these uh, green orbitals that uh, have a p set symmetry and this correspond to the positions in the lattice in which we have a uh, ab uh, ab or ba stacking and then in between we have the these uh, domain wall uh, regions that are signaled here uh, in, in purple, and here we have uh, three, uh, this is a Kaome lattice, and we have three orbitals with S uh, symmetry. So uh, these are the orbitals that we have, and then we can have a look at what is the orbital weight uh, of each kind of orbitals in our bands. And here uh, I have uh, made two groups. One is uh, the, with the AAP orbitals. These are the orbitals that are the, in the triangular lattice. And uh, the red color here and the width of, of these uh, bands uh, is uh, related to how much, uh, what is the weight of these orbitals in these particular bands. So we can see that the AAP orbitals dominate mainly the flat bands, except at gamma, while the rest of the orbitals that uh, we will see that we would call them LC because they are less correlated, uh, dominate the remote bands, except that uh, gamma, uh, where they are also important in the flat bands. So with this uh, Vanier uh, uh, orbitals, we can also calculate the interactions, uh, doing the integrals, and then uh, I plot here the density-density interactions as a function of the distance between the, the orbitals. So at zero, we have the on-site interactions. Uh, and uh, we see that uh, very long, uh, very far away, we still have significant interactions. We cannot throw them away. Uh, and I want to distinguish what happens with the two types of orbitals that we have. Uh, on one hand, we have the AAP orbitals that, as I said, uh, dominate the flat band. So they have a very narrow bandwidth and they have the largest interaction. Okay, and uh, on the other hand, the other uh, the other orbitals have a smaller interaction, but it's not really something negligible, so we, don't, we cannot um, ignore them. And we also have, as I said, all this long tail of interactions that are very similar, so uh, we have to include them them all. But the thing is that we have like two sets of orbitals, ones that are we expect to be very strongly correlated and others that we expect to be less correlated. 
Okay, so then that makes us think about a heavy fermion picture in which uh, we have some orbitals that are going to form uh, local moments and the others are screening these local moments. Uh, and the idea then is to use this uh, uh, to make a suitable approximation to solve the problem. And what we do is that uh, we consider at the dynamical mean field theory level only the local interaction, the on-site interaction between the AAP orbitals. And we do the self-consistency here using uh, this impurity solver uh, in continuous time quantum Monte Carlo uh, by uh, Howlett. And then the rest of the interactions, these are all the other interactions between the AAP, between uh, within the LC orbital section and also between AAP and LC. They are all considered at the hard tree level. And we do uh, self-consistency here as well, okay? And importantly, we don't allow symmetry breaking to appear so that we uh, can get an idea of what happens without uh, symmetry breaking. Okay, so in all these, I'm introducing the density density interactions. I'm not taking into account exchange and other terms that are smaller. They can be important for symmetry breaking, but uh, here we are not uh, taking them into account. Okay, so let's go to the results. Just a note that uh, I'm going to focus here on results for a, a temperature of 6 Kelvin. And uh, I'm going to show uh, results for two sets of uh, parameters. Uh, the qualitative results are, are very, very similar, uh, but uh, uh, well, uh, I have these two sets just because uh, of the, the way that uh, we have been um, uh, performing the calculations. So, uh, but you will see that they are all, all consistent. So this ratio first uh, that I didn't introduce, uh, this omega naught divided by uh, omega one is just the ratio between the uh, tunneling and the AA stacking points uh, uh, compared to the AB uh, A, B positions. Uh, and, um, and this uh, value is different from one because we have relaxation. That is also uh, behind the fact that uh, the flat bands are isolated from the remote bands. So before going to the result, just remember a little what we were uh, seeing before, that uh, these cascades that have been observed in uh, STM measurements, in which I remind you there, there is a spectral weight reorganization, resets at the integers, different behavior, at the charge neutrality point and the oscillations of the remote bands. And these uh, results in which uh, the density of states has, uh, has been seen to, um, uh, well, to be depressed at uh, integer fillings. And this is the results that we get out of our uh, DMFT plus H3 uh, calculations. So this is the density of states, which would be proportional to the DIDB characteristics that have been uh, observed experimentally. And we observe exactly the same kind of things that have been observed in experiments. We have this spectral weight um, shift uh, from uh, energies of the order of where you would expect to have uh, Haber bands towards the uh, chemical potential, which is at zero. And then every time that we fill the bands with a uh, uh, integer value of electrons, we have a, sh uh, a reset of, of this, uh, of this uh, uh, spectral weight reorganization. Uh, we also see this different behavior at the charge neutrality point, and uh, here we see the oscillations of the uh, remote bands. Okay, these oscillations of the remote bands are coming from a, a part that uh, I forgot to mention before, but there is a part in the remote band that is very flat. So this is giving us this uh, strong signal at a uh, higher energies. Uh, of course, we can also plot the density of states at the chemical potential as a function of the filling. This would be the charge and energy point. Here we are plotting, uh, we are uh, doping with electrons, here we are doping with holes, and we see this suppression at the integer fillings a kind uh, to the one that has been observed experimentally. Uh, we can also calculate the inverse compressibility. There is a derivative of the chemical potential with respect to the interior filling. Uh, we have uh, defined the chemical potential from the bottom of the lowest of our bands. And we see uh, these asymmetric peaks that uh, happen uh, in the, this so tooth uh, peaks in the inverse compressibility, the symmetric one at the charge neutrality point, 
And this is uh, very similar, remember, to the uh, experimental uh, result that I uh, showed before. Uh, we can understand a little uh, how uh, these things happen if we look at the, the filling of the of the two sets of orbitals. You know, these AAP orbitals, which are the strong correlated ones and the uh, less correlated ones, the fillings are the, the, uh, uh, that are dominating the, the remote bands. You know? And we can see that most of the filling goes uh, to the most correlated orbital, so the scale here in vertical it goes from minus 4 to 4, while uh, the other orbitals are filling, uh, uh, I mean the change in the filling is smaller as we look, uh, this uh, scale is much, is much smaller. We see that for the AAP orbitals, uh, the um, increase of the filling as we change the doping is uh, monotonous and there's a very slight uh, step at integer fillings. And in the, in the less correlated orbitals, we have a non-monotonous uh, increase of the filling. So we see that uh, the moment that we go from one integer filling to the next, we first have like a fast filling of these uh, less correlated orbitals, and then the filling gets like a, a constant with doping. And this means that the filling is happening basically in the AAP. And we will see how this is seen later in the, in the bands. Okay, so um, just to finish the comparison with the experimental result that I presented at the beginning, uh, I remind you of these um, uh, resistivity measurements in, uh, as a function of the, of the doping, and we can see uh, how these uh, resistive states survive up to high temperatures in, uh, at interior fillings, and we have calculated the DC conductivity that uh, follows uh, this, this kind of behavior with a suppression of the conductivity or an increase of the resistivity at the interior feelings. No, that is uh, uh, similar to the uh, result that we have if we look at the, the density of the states. So we can uh, learn much more by uh, looking at uh, the bands. Uh, so these are the bands at the charge neutrality point. Uh, we see that uh, here, uh, the, remember that the AAP orbitals uh, dominate this part of the, of the flat bands, and here they are becoming incoherent, so their spectral weight is shifting to the Hubble bands, and this is what uh, we see here. Uh, so we see this incoherence because of the formation of uh, the local moments uh, of, uh, I mean, from the electrons uh, coming from these orbitals. But uh, we have a momentum selective incoherence because the, at gamma, uh, the spectral weight is uh, dominated by the less correlated orbitals and they are coherent. Okay, so we have a different um, uh, presence of incoherence uh, as a function of the momentum. And this is just a reflection of uh, these two kinds of electrons. If we start doping, uh, we see that uh, the electrons are, remember that the electrons start to fill the LC orbitals. Uh, so the AAP ones still are uh, very incoherent. Uh, and there is a, a here a change in the on-site energies. So here we see this uh, band bending that is coming from the hard tree uh, results, in fact. Okay, so we have a different behavior of the two orbitals, no? because they are feeling differently as we dope. And, that, and then as you keep increasing uh, the doping towards the next integer, uh, you see how the heavy quasi-particle forms and there is a band flattening. And then if you keep increasing above one, then uh, everything starts again, right? Like uh, all this, uh, um, change in, in uh, the role of the different orbitals and having the, um, the more incoherence or less incoherence depending on uh, the feeling that you have between two integer feelings. We can also uh, look at um, uh, what is happening by plotting uh, the spectral weight as a function of uh, doping at particular values of, of the of the moment of uh, k, so at gamma uh, at gamma here this would be this uh, this part here we are plotting at gamma for a different mu and for different feelings and uh, for different energies and we can see uh, all the signals of the flat bands. These are the two flat bands that uh, have uh, this um, 
is, uh, a strong coherent uh, uh, peaks here, or, or signals here. So these are the two flat bands. And then we have uh, this part of the remote band, the one that is closest to the flat bands that are giving us uh, this uh, signal with these uh, oscillations that we have seen already a, a few times. And this uh, bottom plot would correspond to the M point. Okay, so here uh, in particular at uh, the charge neutrality point zero, uh, here you don't have uh, much of a signal, but then uh, remember that at uh, zero at the charge at the chemical potential, sorry, there is a quasi particle peak forming, and you can see if you look at uh, the end point here, you can see how the, the this quasi particle uh, peak emerges and how it disappears again and then it emerges again, etc. And uh, the thing is that all this, uh, I mean, we can we can get from the from the experiments, but it would be great to uh, see this. Uh, sorry, we can see this from the theory, but it would be great to see it also uh, in experiments and the uh, measurement that can be done in order to uh, explore uh, this. Um, uh, these features that I have been explaining is uh, to do uh, to uh, measure optical conductivity. So this is what uh, we see here. Uh, this is uh, uh, the filling. Uh, so this is again the charge neutrality point, and this is the energy. So we can see that uh, this uh, the optical conductivity has uh, uh, strong uh, features happening at a range of energies that uh, are given by the uh, transitions between the flat and the remote bands. We have a stronger peaks uh, in these uh, positions uh, or these uh, feelings at which uh, we have a well-formed quasi-particle peak. And uh, we have broader uh, signals uh, where um, there is more incoherence. Okay, and we can see also uh, the resets and all these uh, features that we can see very clearly in the density of states or the DIDB from the uh, STM measurements. But here uh, we have a, like another probe uh, to see what is uh, happening. And uh, we hope that uh, this kind of um, results can help us elucidate whether in the experiments uh, we have uh, these kind of uh, features that uh, we have observed. And uh, just uh, before finishing, just uh, uh, well, uh, mention the consistency with other work. So there is this work by Hoffman et al. in 2022, in which they did some determinant quantum Monte Carlo, and this would be what uh, they get for the for the flat bands uh, at the charge neutrality point, which is uh, well, very similar to the result that that we have got at the charge neutrality point, and also well the the work. Uh, that uh, Gautam will present in, in the next uh, talk, in which uh, they have done very similar um, calculation, but uh, based on a different model and also using a uh, different uh, impurity solver. Uh, so the results are all consistent. Uh, so the density of states, the bands, the inverse compressibility uh, are all consistent in the case that we have studied here, the symmetric state, but they also have studied the um, the broken symmetry in states and as they will show later. Okay, so with this uh, I finish just to summarize this uh, DMFT plus hard tree calculations of uh, the eight orbital model uh, in the normal state, so without a uh, symmetry breaking, allows us to uh, to find out uh, I mean the, the transitions that have been observed in STM experiments, the asymmetric uh, peaks here in the inverse compressibility, the resistive states at um, interior fillings. And also we have uh, seen that uh, we should expect to have a momentum selective incoherence and that we could study all this by looking at the optical uh, conductivity. Okay, so with all this, I uh, thank you for, for your attention. Yeah, thank you very much, Maria, for this uh, fascinating talk. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of questions uh, in the audience. And again, as a reminder, you can use your raise hand feature. Uh, yeah, Andy. Hi. Um, yeah, beautiful talk. Um, I Andy. will ask this question also to the next speaker. Um, but uh, I couldn't quite follow. Um, do the flat bands in your calculation, do the flat as you change doping, do the flat bands sink into the weakly correlated bands or not? 
other yeah. words, is there a doping in which I have a firm, in which I really have a weakly correlated band at the Fermi surface? Uh, what you have here, maybe I can zoom here. Uh, this part, uh, I mean, it's uh, it's not really that it sinks in, but this is coming from the uh, less correlated orbitals that um, were already there without interactions. Yeah. Right. In no, no, but, but so that, I think that answers my question that in your calculation, perhaps in contrast to what I heard about the other calculation, basically the, the uh, weakly correlated bands stay separate and this rearrangement with the oscillations and the compressibility, et cetera, et cetera, is a property of essentially playing games only with the flat bands. Um, yeah, but uh, I mean, what, yeah, uh, we have a deformation of the heart uh, at the heart tree level, sure. we have a deformation of the bands, yeah, and yeah. this is what is going basically to show up here. Yeah, yeah so if yeah. we look at, yeah, right. we look at uh, okay. here as well. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, you can see that uh, this shape is coming from from a heart tree level. Yeah, sure, um, understood. But but at this, I, I'm asking because in but but uh, but this is this changes at interior feeling okay so yeah. this uh, at, yeah at interior feeling you have a a change here which is not at the heart tree at the heart tree level mm -hmm. right got it thank you no i'm asking because um uh this relates to the vexed question of double counting correction in the whole dft plus dmft theory mm -hmm. more broadly because what the double counting correction really does is position the correlated bands with respect to the uncorrelated bands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so, but no, but thank you very much. That's, that answers my question. That's very interesting. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And Gautam already knows which question is to be answered in the next <laughs> talk. Uh, he probably knew it already, but uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Any more no, questions? No, but I mean, seriously, it's, I, th I think that also, from an experimental point of view, it's an interesting question. Does it happen or not? And what is the right spectroscopy to see if it happens? Mm. Anyway. Any more questions from the audience at this point? So I, I would have one more question, namely about the significance of the, of the negative inverse compressibility. Can you comment on this? Because yeah, it, there were yeah. negative uh, values as well. Uh, yeah, it's it's not. I mean, it's not uh, this inverse compressibility that uh, that appears in the experiment and that we also have here. Um, is I mean, it's not related. Uh, we think to phase separation or anything like that. It's uh, related because you have a capacitive coupling to the gates, and uh, in fact, in order to mimic this thing that you have in experiments and you cannot uh, get rid of, uh, we have mimicked it. Uh, by uh, measuring our chemical potential or the change in the chemical potential with respect to the bottom of the lowest band that we have. Uh, I mean, this is the way that we we uh, find out to uh, or that we thought that was uh, uh, that make uh, a sen some sense in order to to uh, be able to have these uh, kind of features that were observed uh, experimentally. But uh, it's not a uh, um, yeah, it wouldn't imply a phase separation or anything like that, because it's related to something of the of the setup. Let's say. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, maybe a quick uh, other question. So, um, for um, did I see? It? No, there is nothing in the chat. Sorry. No. No. Uh, so for. Um, for uh, for your interaction parameters, was this a CRPA calculation which you did there, or okay. how did you? So for the interaction parameters of your yeah. model, did you do CRPA, or how did you estimate the the interaction for the interactions? Mm -hmm. The interactions we uh, just uh, we I mean we we got them from uh, you have the Vanier the your Vanier orbitals. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you, know, you just calculate the the integrals uh, of the overlaps, let's say, of the of the interactions. So that gives you the these uh, parameters. And then what we use is uh, different values of uh, the epsilon of the dielectric constant 
uh, to, to mimic that, uh, of course, you have uh, an environment. So as I said, we chose uh, different sets of parameters, but uh, the, the results are basically, are basically the, the same. The qualitative results are, are the same. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I see no further questions in the chat, nor any raised hands. So let's uh, thank Maria again for this uh, fantastic talk. Thank you very much.